this video to understand how to digitally paint for your album cover using Photoshop. The template for the album cover is inside of the project. Make sure you cho you're choosing the Photoshop version, not the Illustrator version. You have two artboards. You have an album cover, which is the main design, and we have our record art, which is the circular design that is on the actual album itself. When we're painting, we have three different ways I want to go over. One, you can freestyle paint. Number two, you can paint onto a sketch and then get rid of the sketch later and be left with your painting. Or we can use the mixer brush, which, which is when you use pixels that are already existing in the photo to make it look like a painting. So let's talk about freestyle. Freestyle can be completed or accomplished by bringing in a sketch and painting right on top of it. Or you could be using the sketch that you have on your desk and looking at that as a reference to paint. If you do bring a sketch in, you are going to definitely make sure to keep your layers organized by having a sketch layer. And you're going to be having uh, painting layers above that. Before you turn in your final project, you are going to be turning off that sketch so that we do not see the sketch in your design. We only want to see the finished product. When you free style paint, you have the defaulted brushes here. Remember also too, in your brushes panel, you have a menu that allows you to add more brushes. You'll be directed to the Adobe Photoshop uh, site that has all the different brushes that you can choose from. So um, be selective. Pick the brushes that you like because you might get a completely different effect if you um, use some of these brushes. Okay, that's how to use the brush for freestyle. Now let's talk about bringing in an image and painting on top. This is very similar to your watercolor project. Um, we made the picture of your flowers black and white. We are going to also make this image black and white. So I'm going to go into my layers. In the adjustment settings, I can click on black and white. I'm going to go back to my image and I'm actually going to lower the opacity. And I'm going to clip my adjustment into my picture. And I'm going to make a new layer for my painting. And I'm going to paint directly on top. I can use the colors from those Im that, that image if I double click on it. Use my eyedropper to grab a color. Come back to my project with my paintbrush. I'm going to paint right on top. Okay. So remember with this one too, before you turn it in, you would turn it off, turn these images off, and you'd be left with a painting. So that's a, that's a way to paint. Okay, let's delete these so I can go ahead and show you the last example. The last example is using the mixer brush. So I'm going to place this image here. And this is a cloud image, so Photoshop is kind of protecting it for me. So if you notice, when you go into your layers with your mixer brush on, you're going to have to tell it it's okay um, to edit. Okay, So if I hold this down and grab my mixer brush, you'll notice that it's not letting me. I'm going to make um, this, uh, convert this to a layer. This picture is is actually protected. It's inside of my library, so I have access to the original photo. So I'm going to convert to layers. Click yes, and then I'm going to be allowed to actually edit the photo. All right. The other thing that might be helpful too before we did that, instead of doing that, is let me show you again. This is probably a better way to do it. Make a copy of it first. Then you're, you're, you're able to keep the original. This isn't a necessity necessarily because of the fact that you still have the original photo, but it just might make it go a little bit faster if you do make a mistake because then you have the original sitting inside your layers. So Command J. And then you can turn this off for now. You can convert this to a layer. Click yes, 
And now if you were to make a mistake with this, you could go ahead and delete it and then just have an extra copy sitting here down below. All right, now mixer brush. Very important. Make sure that you are cleaning it in between each stroke. You don't want there to be any color in here. If you have a color in here, it's adding that color to your brush every time. We don't want to add color. We just want to use the colors that are already inside of the photo. I'm going to choose a hard round because I don't want anything too hazy. You can choose the wetness of the brush, how much paint you want loaded, how much mixing you want to happen, how smooth you want the flow, um, and then you can just start coming in here. I like this tool very much. It definitely does give off a painter look, but it can also be used incorrectly. Um, you can over mix and you can lose a lot of those features. So the less water that you use, the better. The less mixing you use, the better. Um, so that it looks more realistic. Because I could come in here and totally mess this up and lose this beautiful highlight on her cheek just by taking too big of a stroke. So I want to go slow. Also, the computer's trying to catch up with my mouse. Um, and I should say with any digital painting, a tablet is always better. So I would definitely get the Wacom tablet for whatever painting you're um, trying to accomplish. Okay. Now in this case, I would not turn off the original photo before I turn it into my finished product because obviously it's part of my design. So this would stay on there. Okay. When you're ready, no matter which style you chose, you're going to go to File, Save As, you're going to save to your Creative Cloud, and then lastly, you're going to export both artboards as pings to your Creative Cloud as well. So we need the working files, and we need the ping file. The ping files are considered your um, yeah, assets and then your finished file, the one that you export as a PSD, that's considered your working file.